Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Computer Wednesday, we're going to talk about Raspberry Pi 400. So let's dive right into it. Well, first, before we understand this exact product, we have to understand the ethos, aka what exactly is Raspberry Pi. So it started in 24 February 2012, so not very old. And it started a kind of revolution of single board computer. Basically, this is a computer that's contained in a board size and board size are generally small enough where you can compare it to a credit card. And Raspberry Pi they always try to make sure that it's almost the same footprint as a credit card and it has everything to run it like basically it should be a complete computer at that point in time now again it's up to you how do you power it how do you add monitors to it keyboard mouse all that jazz that's up to you but as a computer it should be self-sufficient that's the whole point of single board computer now it started a revolution so big that there are now hundreds of companies trying to make this and there are a few big ones which even include someone that they are using full desktop computers on a single board for example latte panda so it started a very big movement and it started a community you have to understand that whenever you are talking about an open source system or uh, something like you know that uh, is kind of tinkery class or like hacker kind of class you have to have a community without a community it will just fade out so raspberry pi has successfully made a community and that community expanded to bonkers level so it went from a oh, niche tool to fancy tool to like hey if we can do something useful hey we can do something really useful to like whoa i can do this with this i can do that with this i can do this also with this so it started to uh, to go from like you know niche tool to toy to something like that to like whoa everybody is doing everything with it so Fundamentally, uh, it reached a point where it's much more than what they intended for it to be. Basically, they started like, hopefully this will not disappear to like, whoa, this is significant part of IT industry right now. Like almost everybody who deals with uh, uh, maker space, maker culture and all that, they know about Raspberry Pi and many schools, computers and all that jazz. They are utilizing this and computation is also becoming cheaper so it's utilizing that also so if you compare the first raspberry pi to raspberry 4 current generation you will find the uh, price basically dollar per teraflop basically horsepower of computers uh, it's much more for much less price so we, we are getting much more efficient and more powerful at the same time while remaining in the same cost envelope so that's the whole thing that we are talking about here now the makers of a raspberry pi they realize something very crucial is that if kids are exposed to uh, good tools they will make good stuff like how the heck usa reached a point where they had a silicon valley that was like generations ahead of everybody else simply because they had tools like commodore 64 now even like dude commodore 64 is not a tool yes, the, it's more than enough for children's imagination so if children have access to this and just connect this with a tv and they have a rudimentary computer everybody is going bonkers with it like you take steve jobs you take bill gates all of them had something of similar nature like this where they are like dude this is there and they can interact with it they can work with it and they can learn computation with it because now you might be like can't i achieve the same thing if i give my children uh, like you know a tablet or mobile phone problem is tablet and mobile phone are way too powerful what does that mean that simply means it already has a lot of things done to it for example how the heck you open a file in a like a commodore 64 versus how do you open in a computer in computer everything is already taken care of in a mobile phone everything is already taken care of it's designed in that way so fundamentally we reach a point where kids are not learning computation they're just learning how to use a computer so computation versus actually uh, like you know uh, just Oh, I can click here. It says open here, click here, do that. So fundamentally, they're not going and they're not tinkering with it. They're like, this is the final thing. And I noticed this in one of my cousins. He's like using one, uh, one plus six or something like that. Expensive phone. And he's like, it's slow. I'm like, dude, you should not buy expensive phones at that age. Fundamentally, you should not ever have access to something that expensive where you can be like, I'm, I'm uh, damn sure I'm only going to give my children very low end phones. So they learn patience. So fundamentally, because they have this experience, everything just works. Computation has become something that they never want to pursue. And it's a, like a trend. They can actually plot it out on a mathematical graph with enough accuracy where it's like it's predictive. The reality is right now, current generation is uh, not doing very well. Fundamentally, most people are not even touching stems because they don't have what we call get down and dirty. It's like this is how things work. No, we see completely done things. Even in your home, a completely done thing. Your car, it just works. Your computer, it just works. Even 3D printer, it just works. So fundamentally, uh, this whole system was designed in that way. It's like get kids into computing, allow them to get down and dirty, actually explore, figure things out and get that dopamine fix of uh, like, you know, hey, I wrote a giant code and it does something, you know, rather than just like, oh, just do this or click this button, connect it to Wi-Fi. No, 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 like actually write down the code, like get it down and dirty. And it was directly inspired from uh, Commodore 64. So fundamentally, and there is, it's not like Commodore 64 is the only thing. There are many, many devices. And I would urge you to search 
what uh, inspired basically Bill Gates. Like the first computer Bill Gates uses, like it did not even had a display. So fundamentally, uh, there is a very serious logic behind it. It's a very long term investment in the future of humanity. It's like if kids are exposed to a computation device that already works, they will not be interested into figuring it out how the heck it actually works. And then you could literally have a scenario where it's like, hey, wait a minute, nobody's there in the colleges uh, where they teach actual computation, machine language and all that jazz. And then you're like, well, we don't have any jobs. So it is a very serious thing. So they took all the best things from it and they created something what we call plug and play. So the reality is Raspberry Pi is pretty good. It's pretty awesome. However, uh, it's very hard to, uh, to sell to parents. It's like, look at this. The moment you're gonna show a parent, let's say a boy or a girl, little boy and girl, and you're gonna show them like this is an exposed PCB with a pointy things and where you have to connect hundreds of these things and they're like, yeah, no, no. Now, they may, their children itself may be very brilliant, but point is, as a parent, you will not be like comfortable with that kind of thing. So they made it like completely nicely packaged. So that was the whole point of Commodore. It's like, you know, it's something that you can uh, sell to parent and children can grow with it. So that's uh, one good thing. They figured it out. Another aspect is uh, Raspberry Pi, because it's an open system. It's like, you know, you're supposed to put it in an enclosure. You're supposed to do things with it. They do not have the luxury of heat sinks. They do not know how, what big, uh, you know, heat sinks they can use because they do not know where you're going to utilize this. But in this, because it's a complete product, they know like, okay, we have this much area. So they put a giant metal plate here. Benefit of this metal plate, it's A, it allows the system to work without overheating. And because it's so big and huge, it does not need a fan. So without even a fan, it has very good performance. And even in a hot environment, it's very good, awesome. And because it's using giant metal plate, it makes the whole keyboard looks instead of feel like a, like, you know, just a plastic junk to a, like, a, oh, this is something significant, something solid. So that's a, like, you know, multiple advantages. And GPIO pins, the reason why this system is so important, this, the reason why you can connect uh, servo motors with this, uh, power sensors with this, like, you know, registers uh, trunk basically sensors multiple things with it is simply because of GI, uh, GPIO pin general purpose input output pin now these pin uh, they could have uh, de decided to just like you know ignore it but they did not and that's the whole ethos of uh, you know Raspberry Pi that's why it's not meant for a computer now if you like how the heck people used to do that in old days in old days every computer used to have a beta port serial ports and uh, if you read old magazines enough you'll find people have like multiple projects use the serial port to do this you like uh, how we try to do that with uh, basically using modern usb but problem with usb is using usb is very advanced and uh, it's so advanced that you need multiple controller layers of controller on the your board side on this and all that so Fundamentally, having that GPIO is very important and that is easily accessible. Now, these things are very good. They learned a lot and this is fourth iteration. They learned a lot, but they're kind of limited, which kind of uh, bonk, uh, like, you know, surprises me. It's like now their uh, Raspberry Pi Foundation is pushing that this is an actual desktop. It's a computer you can buy and just utilize it. Uh, it's not there yet, for, first of all. And second, why the heck they are limiting it? If they want to showcase it like this is a computer, why the heck they are limiting it to four gigabytes? They know for a fact that eight gigabytes are needed. They provide that in a, like, you know, Raspberry Pi model four. It's just why it's not there. Like, that's odd. Another aspect is it does not have any audio system. Like, uh, basically, you do not have a headphone jack where you can connect your headphone or microphone. Fundamentally, that's a very big limitation with this. For example, let's say you want to set this up. It's good enough, powerful enough where you can do a video call. And let's say you have a big office and you just want, hey, I want something simple, efficient there, which does not run Windows. So I can be damn sure when I plug it, there is no Windows upload and all that happening. This is a very good tool. but. You have to use utilize uh, basically USB audio and microphone system for getting mic and audio all that all that jazz. So finally, that's weird, and I can understand removing all these things on a credit card system because again, it's not big enough. Here they have giant PCB. Why the heck they do not have audio system? Another aspect, the thing that is genuinely frustrating is like micro HDMI. Why? I can understand that. Like if you want to put two HDMI ports in a basically in a single slot it's very difficult doable but difficult so i can get that like why they went into micro hdmi like why this and they know that micro hdmi is a bad idea that's why when you look into raspberry pi compute 4 module it specifically is breakout board it has two full-size hdmi so they know that full-size hdmi is a good choice and for some reason they're like mm, let's not do that because if they have done that then this would become much more comfortable gift because right now it comes into packages so if you only buy this you can't gift it to anyone you have to gift them like you know hdmi converter basically you go from mini to full size so that's the whole point is fundamentally limited just because of the goddamn hdmi this is really weird it's like that is super easy to fix and it's not like oh they have to convert it voltage or all that it's just a physical plug they have to make put a bigger plug so that kind of upsets me it's like to 
I, I can live with that 4 GB awesome price reasons and all that jazz okay awesome audio jack eh, most people are gonna utilize with that a television rather than a monitor so I can understand that full size is even like why why that really bothers me it's like you know this was so close to being perfect it's like why so what are the actual uses of it? Now you have to understand that at this point in time, you can genuinely say this, this as a first party computer is a very low cost system. If you have a uh, basically TV, how old people used to have that, you can just buy this, done. Like just add a television is, uh, you know, boom, done, go. So that's a really good system. And on top of that, if you directly compare, let's say the $70 equipment to $70 secondhand computer, secondhand computer is gonna destroy this puppy, flat out. X86 is not a laughing matter and it's power hungry, but it does have the oomph, it does have the power. So fundamentally, there is no competition. However, what if you are limited by power? For example, let's say you want to run a system where you're monitoring something remote and it's like, you know, it's just running on solar panels. How the heck are you gonna run something like that? For example, the, to give you a simple thing, let's say all you want to do is just log data. This is a computer, it's just gonna log data. Let's say you have 15 sensors just logging the data how much power is being consumed by the computation module itself this puppy will consume maximum of 5 watts of power while a desktop in idling will consume more than 25 watts so fundamentally you get the point if you are in a position where power constraint is serious or you want long battery backups or you are running on solar it becomes a very useful thing it's not just like oh it's a crippled system for extra price no it's a useful thing another aspect small and compact nature for example let's say you want to have a lot of setup where you are just teaching basic things basic like how to do what processing how to do thing, basic thing basic stuff and uh, if you want to make a desk, uh, desk for people and and you have monitor and you have to have a keyboard but you imagine it this way you don't have to figure out where the heck you're gonna put the desktop that's it done so that saves place and if you are talking about let's say call centers uh, saving space is a very critical thing so if you can let's say instead of having five rows of computers you have six row of computers because okay space saved that's a lot of money so fundamentally that small and compact and power efficient that power efficient is also very critical because if you're running a call center for example instead of going from let's say uh, you know 10 computers you can run on the same power requirement you can run 100 system because it's so efficient that saves a lot of electrical bill electricity is not free and not to mention you have to figure out backups and all that those will also go down so that's awesome so there is a lot of serious potential into this and if you want to do basic work let's say you have some elderly in your family who's like i know uh, enough about computers that i can do basic stuff but i like you know don't, don't want to buy a, like you know okay this is an expensive laptop gaming laptop or this that so you you know you know you want something like that is basic enough that gets the job done but it's first hand you don't want to uh, deal with second hand and all that and this is more than good enough if you have someone heck even you yourself if let's say you are all you are dealing with is like you are in hr department all you have to do is deal with uh, basically emails documents videos and all that jazz you can do that perfectly fine and heck you can if you are power constrained which in india most places are this would be really awesome you can use a very small ups and this puppy will keep running for eight and nine hours so that's the whole thing and another aspect why it's good for children rather than giving them very expensive mobile phones is just it allows the core development the book that is being sold with this puppy especially in advanced kit it's really good like you can literally buy this in a summer vacation and start developing with your kids like do not just give your kid as a, hey, it's a book do something with it no start developing with them and then you will realize like in less than a month you can start in the morning and you're like you know brick by brick day by day week by week and by the end of the whole system by the time you have completed the book your kid will have genuine understanding of how the heck computer works like actual fundamental level now again you can may not have the aptitude that allows them to become the next uh, you know the big thing but they will have enough understanding where they can do things and you know if children are creative enough which last time they were they built a silicon valley so fundamentally we do not know what we can have in the future but if they have only access to completely built a device completely locked off system where be it windows be it uh, uh, you know android be it uh, iphone they're not gonna grow because they are already seeing a completely done thing so they need somewhere like they have that satisfaction it's like i wrote a code it works i connected a server motor it works i connected a led it works they rather than like you know having the satisfaction of like ask daddy for money and just buy a like you know why a smart bulb you don't want that so there's a lot of potential to this it's really good i'm only really uh, mad about that hdmi thing that really bothers me it's like dude that's super easy and you know that's an important problem that you created you solved it in one product it's, that bothers me and it's like microphone and uh you know microphone and audio jack it can be you know dealt with very easily with a, like you know low grade usb audio device but why so 
this was my presentation on raspberry pi 400 i hope you liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button share it amongst your friend that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me extra disappointment please leave a comment because i try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching